Okay, so in this video, I'm going to just go through how to create this truss um, for your 3D models. So this truss supports the first floor, so it's within it there. Um, it's this section here, and it spans from this wall to this wall, and it grows across the whole you know, section of the house there. So that's where your trusses will be. Um, so you'll have two smaller trusses as well, um, one here in the back section of the house and in the porch. They don't necessarily have to be the same as this because they're not supporting this first floor. Um, so they don't necessarily have to be the, the same, the same truss. Uh, so they can be a bit simpler. But we're going to focus on this one for now. So the first thing you need to do is go to Blackboard and you need to go to your building information model and Revit folder and you need to scroll down until you see metric structural framing complex and trusses RFT. So these are just two versions of the same file and these are the template files that you work in. Um, so the first thing you need to do is download these files. So just like that it will download and you want to save it somewhere that you know it's going to be so it's easy for you to find and then when you open Revit you're going to go to families and new and then where you can see there where I've saved the template file from Blackboard and my folder Revit Labs 2021 so I just select that template file click open it's just upgrading there to a more up-to-date model and then you might want to save as immediately, so save as family and call it something like Trust for Revit Project or something like that. Because that stops you having to keep upgrading it every time you opened it. And it just also means that you know you know the file that you're working on and some people have lost these before while you were working on them. So I'd advise you to save it before you even start putting anything in. So when you open it, you have these two lines already drawn these are reference planes and this is the center reference plane and this is just a reference level for the bottom of it so your truss in terms of your truss this center line here would be going down through here so you're going to have to draw on either side of that all these members so that can be easy done by just drawing one half and mirroring it to the other side. So I'm going to basically show you how to do it. So you're going to need to use the reference lines, reference planes and extrusions to create it. Um, you're also going to need to be able to add dimensions. So in the modify uh, measure you have dimensions. And then once you have it drawn out um, you create extrusions to actually create the members. And then when it's finished you load it under your project and you can place it under the project then as if it was a beam. So again the same as your main model you can see you have different views you have your 3D views your elevation views and you're going to use them to look at what you're drawing. So I'm going to work in my front elevation view so when you go into this front elevation view you can imagine that's what we're looking at there the front elevation view of this truss. So you can see here you have a reference level zero. So what I want you to do first and foremost is get that turned off because that can hide this bottom reference plane that you're going to be working on and then that can create problems. So if you go to view, go to visibility and graphics, go to annotation categories and turn off your levels. So just uncheck that box and hit apply. You can see it's gone and then you're going to want to click that bottom reference plane and drag it away out and do the same on the other side and I'd advise you to drag that center line up as well good but and then we're ready to start adding our own reference plane so the first ones you're going to add are going to be for the span of the truss. 
So as I said, it spans from end of this wall to the end of this wall. And we know that dimension in this drawn is 9713. That's going to be different in your models because the thickness of these walls have changed. So what you're going to want to do is measure um, that dimension or add a dimension under your own drawing in your floor plans to see what this is going to be. So that tells you what the span of your truss is going to be. Now, in terms of the span of the truss, that dimension is talking about from this point here where the truss meets that reference line to this the, the point here where the truss meets the end of that, that, that wall. So when you're adding in reference planes, you're going to have one for this point and one for this point. And then you're going to have one for the overhang and the overhang. So that's the first two that we're going to draw. Um, because you can see there that your truss doesn't just end at this point at that wall, it actually comes out a bit more. So what I'll do is show you how to start that. So if you go to create and go to reference plane, I'm going to, I'm going to work on this side and I'm going to do one half and then I'm just going to mirror it over to this side. So we're just going to place a reference plane anywhere um, on this side of that center line. And you can see there that a dimension is added on for you. You're going to want to change that um, to be half of this dimension from that point to that point. So in this case it's 9713. So half of that is going to be 4856.5. So what I'm going to do is add, add a dimension. So if you go to modify, measure, and then hit align dimension. And you want it to be from the center line to this reference plane that you've added. So just click that line to that line. And you can see there if I zoom in that it's 5447. And I want to change that. So if I select that dimension that I've put in and I go to label dimension and I hit this create parameter button, I can add in a name for it. So I can call it half truss span. And then I can change this to 45.6.5 and I can lock it and that just means you have to hit that lock button because it means that every time you change this it's going to bring that line with it and then you can move that dimension down just to tidy it up a bit so the next thing you want to do is add the reference plane that shows the truss overhang so again, go to create and go to reference plane and just add one in to the side of that one that you've just drawn. And again, just to show you that that is the dimension from here to here. So it's just showing how far out that truss comes past the wall. And I'm not too sure if the detail is on the drawing, but just for instance, if that was about 400, we need to add in a dimension again. So select that reference plane and that reference plane. We know it's far too big at the moment. So select your dimension and go to label and create a parameter. And we'll call it overhang. And then you can select your dimension and change that. So I'm going to put in 400 and then I'm going to lock it. To that reference plane. So now you can see that we have half of the span of the truss in, we have the overhang in, and I want this the same to be on the other side of that center line. So I'm just going to drag across select those two lines. I'm going to hold control down on my keypad and I'm going to select that dimension and that dimension. I'm going to go up to modify and I'm going to go to mirror pick axis. So it allows you to pick where you want uh, the mirror line to be and I'm going to choose that center line and you can see there that it's added in two reference planes on the other side it's added in the dimensions that we need and so we're ready then to add in some reference lines for the top cord of the truss so after you have um, those dimensions on and your two reference planes drawn there you can add 
in reference lines to indicate where the top core of the truss is going to be. So if you go to create reference line, not reference plane, this time reference line, hit that, we know that the top core is going to end where the overhang ends. So I'm going to choose that point where the bottom reference plane meets the overhang. And you can see as I start to draw it up towards the centre, that that angle, that angle dimension is changing. And from your drawing, I think your rough pitch is supposed to be 42 degrees. So if I stick at 42, go up to the centre and finish my reference line. You can see that we start to get these um, little padlock symbols up. So before you exit out of your reference line drawn, you want to lock these. So hit that, hit that. That just means that if I move this line at all, it's going to stay connected at this point and this point. So if I change the angle and, I went, and it went up further, it would still stay connected to that line. Just makes it easier if you need to change anything. So once you've done that, you can add a dimension again from this reference plane to this reference line. So you're going to go to measure and hit the drop down arrow to you get angular dimension. And you're going to click this bottom reference plane and that reference line you've just drawn. And if I zoom in, you can see that that's 42 degrees. So that's the right angle and hit the padlock. And that locks that dimension. So if you want to check anything of these dimensions that you've already added, let me just change the size of that text there quickly. It's not hard to see. So if you want to change anything or check anything there that you have that you have in, um, let me just show you how to do that. So if you go to the properties up here and modify properties and you select this button family types. It shows you the two the, the dimensions that you already have added. So you've added a half of the truss span, and that's 4856.5, and you've added your overhang, which is 400. Um, you can see that the this angle dimension isn't on there yet because I haven't given that a parameter name. So select that angle dimension, go up to label dimension, and hit the create parameter button. And I'm going to call this rough angle or something like that. And that's changed. I'm going to hit that padlock button again. So now if I go into properties, modify properties and family types, you can see it's been added there. And because I've locked these lines together and those dimensions together, if I change anything, so say I change that rough angle to 45, apply, you can see that that reference line has moved up and it's stayed connected. So it's kind of one of what you want to be careful about what's connected to what. So I'm going to change that back to 42, hit apply, and you can see it's gone back. The same way if I wanted to change the overhang to like 50 and hit apply, you can see it's moved out and everything's stayed connected. So it's working fine. So hit apply. Okay, so I'm going to select that reference line of drawn and that dimension. And again, the same way I did for these two reference planes, I'm just going to go to modify mirror pick axis, choose that center line, and okay, so sorry that was a wee error there. So if I just select that reference line and mirror. And hit that line. Sorry, I didn't do the dimension that time, and that seems to have worked. So we've got that other reference line drawn, and so now we have the top cord of the truss sample. So then, once you have that done, um, you can add a dimension on this side as well, just to make sure everything is the same. Forty-two, and we're going to label that angle roof angle lock it then everything seems to be working well 
so far. So we look at our truss. Now we have this line in here for the bottom. Reference planes are for the bottom of, of that bottom chord. We've got the reference lines in for the top chord and we have our center plane in. So we know then that we have these kind of webs here and one going up there. So that and that. And we have this section here to put in as well. So to do that, you're going to use reference planes to show the points that they meet. So you're going to have one down here. I'll do it in this side so you can see. So there's going to be one, a reference plane drawn down this way to show that point. There's going to be one here to show this two points. There's going to be one here to show there. And there's going to be your center line, which is already there. And one here to show where this meets. So we're going to put those in. And then you use reference lines to just draw in these webs. So if I go back to the model, I'm going to create reference plane. And for the moment, I'm just going to judge where I think they fall roughly. So I think I'll have one about here, maybe a bit further in. I'm just going to draw them roughly and you can change the dimensions then. And so that line I've drawn is to indicate this point. And I know I need one further over again. So I'm just going to place another one maybe there. So if I look at the drawn, I know that this member here and this member here are going to be either side of our two internal walls for the top floor. And I know the dimension of the top floor. So in other words, I know the dimension of this room from here to here. So that kind of tells me where I need to place those, that, those two lines. So from the drawn here, we know that this dimension is 5040, 5040. Um, yeah, so we know that the width of this room that's within those two truss measures there is 5040. So we know that halfway point, so from the center line of your truss to this member, center line to this one, is going to be half of that. So that's 2520. So if I go to my drawing, I'm talking about this dimension changing. So if I add a dimension the way we did for these spans at the bottom, so I'm going to go to measure and aligned dimension, select that center line, select that reference plane there. And I'm going to select that dimension and go up to label it. And I'm just going to call it let's see, um, two Something like that. Doesn't really matter as long as you know what, what you're talking about. So 2520. And I'm going to change that to 2520. Make sure that it's right. And you can see that line's moved in. I'm going to lock it. So then I know that I can mirror that line across the center point. So I'm going to go select that. Mirror pickaxes. And there we go. It's went on the other side. I'm going to select that dimension. I'm going to mirror it about the center again. So now we have these two reference planes on, and 
and again they correspond to this web and this web. So when I have that in, I know by looking at these two, or this one, sorry, I've not done that side, just this one, this reference plane here, that that's not in the right spot just by eye because we know it's going to be sort of roughly in the middle there. So, so now I'm going to do is just by eye to start off with. I'm just going to move it in so it kind of looks like it's fallen in the center somewhere. So it kind of looks looks okay. It looks like it's fallen maybe roughly in the center between this point and this point, or I can check these dimensions and see where I want it to fall. Um, but for now, I'm going to add in a dimension. So align dimension, click that point, click that point. And so if I want this to be kind of roughly in the middle of this reference plane and this reference plane, then I can just measure what the distance is between there and there. So 2336, so we'll just say 2327 roughly. And then I can take half of that. So 1168.5, just add another dimension there to this web. And we don't know that that's going to be also in the middle there. So if I was to do the same for the other side again, I just select that reference plane I've drawn and mirror it across the center. So we've added that. And we'll just add in our dimension of the other side by mirroring it across that axis again. And there we've got those points drawn. So now we know that we're going to have a truss web going here one here and then we know that the room is going to be from this point. So once we have that in you can add in the reference lines um, that show that. Um, but before we do that I'm going to add in a reference plane that shows the height of the bottom cord of the truss. So if I go to create reference plane and we know it's going to go across bottom somewhere. So select anywhere. Uh, and we're going to add in another dimension. So if we go to measure and align dimension and select this line, this line, you can see that's at 300 at the minute. So if I go to label dimension, create a parameter and I call this truss height or something like that. And we can change that to whatever the thickness is supposed to be. So I'm not sure what it says in the drawing, what 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 um, the detail of that bottom cord is, but say it was 300. Let's see if that changes. You know, you can change it um, to whatever the height does. Should be from drawing. Um, basically what I'm showing here by these two reference planes is this dimension from here to here. So what is the the height of that bottom cord going across? Just check the detail in your drawing. So then what we're going to do is we've added reference planes to show these webs where they meet. So we've got those in. And we know we're going to need ones here and here also and here and here. And we're going to cross. So let's think about that next. So by I. You can just add them in roughly what you think where they should go. So in my mind, somewhere along here. So go to create and reference plane. I'm just going to put one right here. And I'm going to mirror that on the other side. So go to modify mirror. 
and I'm going to add dimensions. So I'm going to go to measure and aligned dimension and grab one from here to here and from here to here. I'm going to change the name of those in a minute. So I've just moved those in um, to be about 1500 from each, from the centre each side and I went to measure, align dimension, added those in and then I went to label dimension parameter and I created a parameter called top web there um, and then we know about halfway between this point and this point we're going to have another two reference planes for the remaining webs. So if I add another reference plane, so if I go create reference plane, project and I'm going to just close here and I'm going to just add a dimension from here to here. See that's 800. I don't know what X750. So if I go to label dimension, create parameter, and I go in something like that, really doesn't matter what you name them as long as you know what you're referring to. Stop that. Then that's moved, and I'm going to mirror that line across the center that's been added. Mirror that dimension the center there we go now we can see that all of our lines have been, our reference planes sorry have been added so once you've added all of the reference planes um, you can start to add your reference lines um, that connect um, all of the webs to the cords so in this case I go to create and reference line And I'm going to have one from this point to this point. And you want to make sure that all of the padlocks are locked. And I'm going to have one from Sorry, just undo that. <clears throat> okay, so reference line. I'm going to have one from here to here. And I'm going to have one from there to there. to check that so we have one from there to there and one from there to there and I'm going to have one from there to the middle and from that point to that point so we have that point and that point and so for this web here, if you go to your drawing, you know that the bottom of that is going to be at this height here. So you can move that up. You could move this. Um, you know, you have you could add a dimension, and to show the height of it. And just move that down. So what I'll do is the reference plane going across. So I delete that for a second. And add a dimension from here to 
Okay. Hotline. I would just label that. Um, room. Room height or something like that, and change that to whatever it is in the diagram there, or whatever it is from your drone. So two, four, three, oh, imagine it's that. Leaves that down, and then no, then you could, you know, redraw on those reference lines as you like. So there. Up that to that, and. Going across. So, you know, you can move that up and down, change the height you want it to be at, change those reference lines. You can see that all the padlocks are closed, so that's all right. That means that that should move if you change the height of it at all, and so on. So, what you do on one side, you want to do the, the other side. So, let me select that. Reference line, I'm holding the control button down and I'm just clicking those other members and I should mirror it across the center line. And you can see that it's added those there. So then we've got a, a truss kind of roughly laid out. So once you have all of that drawn in, then you can look at creating extrusions out of these members um, to actually create it. So then when you have everything drawn in, you can start to create your extrusions. So if we go to create an extrusion, um, if we want to create this top cord first, um, I would just draw a line from the center. So you can see here and draw and it's online. So draw a line down. Focus. And if you draw a line with the overhang, that overhang line down and lock it. And then if you use the pick line, so if you go to draw, draw and pick line, and if you select that line and lock it, then you can use. Oh, sorry, not my thing. So if you choose pick lines. And we're going to select that top cord line, but you're going to want to offset it to whatever the thickness of that um, cord should be. So, you know, imagine it was if it was 150 or something like that. And then you see if you go to the pick line, you can choose what side you want it to draw to. So, I'm going to draw it to this side. And then you can use the trim tool to extend that out. So if you go to modify and the trim, extend the corner tool. So you select that line and that line and it trims it up for you. And up here as well, if you select that line and that, oh, right. Select that line and So sometimes it takes a few tries to make sure you're trimming to the right lines. Um, you can see that. So then if you go pick lines again and select that line, lock it. And if you go to the trim tool again, okay, make sure I'm doing it right. So I'm selecting this line and that line, and that will trim that for you. And again, that line and this line. Oh, okay. So that line and this line. And that trims that for you. So now you can see we've got a cord drawn in there. And okay. So then mirror that again over the center line. So just I just selected my extrusion, said mirror. Um, pick axes, pick the axes and mirror it over and now you can see you have it on both sides. There. 
So if you go to your elevations, you can check what that looks like. So say if you choose your left elevation, you can see the member I'm drawn in. If I go to the 3D view now, you should be able to see that you've got two extrusions and two, two um, top cords and your model. So if you want to change the thickness of this member, you can just go to your left elevation and add a dimension. So go to measure, dimension, align dimension, and just go from there to there. And you can see it's set at 250. So if you select that dimension, go to label dimension, call it truss thickness, lock that, then you can always change um, that thickness then to what it should be from the drawing. So I'm not too sure what it is. So just double check what the topical thickness of these trusses, trusses should be. And then you can go to the properties and the family types. And then if you go to truss thickness, say it was 200 millimeter thick, you see how to apply that changes that view. Now you need to make sure that it's the same on both sides. So you can see here that it's kind of jutting out more on that side so you need to make sure that everything is dimensioned from all um from all views because if i go to the 3d view now you can see that one side will be thinner than the other so, so just make sure that if you're changing dimensions that you dimension both sides so i'm just going to set that back to 250 just for handiness so everything's the same so at this stage, what we need to add is the bottom cord and then these webs. So if you go back to the elevation that you're working on, you can add extrusions for your bottom cord next. It's probably handiest. So to do that, again, you go to create an extrusion and the bottom cord you know that it's going to be these two reference planes here so i would just go pick lines so go to draw and pick lines and i would select this reference plane lock it this reference plane lock it and i know i want this line to meet that line so it's like that line as well and lock it so then i'm going to trim this corner so I go to modify and use the trim extend to corner tool. And so I want to trim this line back like that. There we go. And this line back to there also. Oh, sorry. No. And I want to trim this line back there. To select, just be careful when you're selecting where you want things to ex trim extend to, so that can be kind of tricky. So in this case, I want to trim this line, let me just zoom in, that line, and I want it to trim to kind of here, so I'm going to select on this side of that line, and you can see I've got a corner there. Then on this side, same kind of thing, I'm going to go pick line, and I'm going to choose that line, and lock it. And then I'm going to trim. So back to the modify trim tool. And I want to trim so I want to trim this line here back to there. And I want to trim this line back to oh other side. So I want to trim this line back to here on that side. There we go. So that's the bottom cord. And if I select that there, you can see we've got another extrusion added. So if I go back to the 3D view here, you can see I've added another member bottom cord. So now the last thing that's left is to just add that web, that web. Let's move them across. These webs, one in the middle, and that's it. So again, if you check your project, if you check.
check your elevations as well when you any anytime you add anything in just make sure so there what i've highlighted that is your bottom chord in, in the elevation view this little square there so just make sure you know every time you add one just go to your elevations and make sure that it's all at the same thickness and you know uh, you know you can change them by just clicking the, the dimension and go into your properties your family types and changing them so okay so now we're going to do these as here so again go to your front view where you're working and We're going to just pick lines with an offset for these. So starting over here, again, we go to create extrusion and I'm going to go pick lines and again, go to your offset and you can indicate how um, thick you want this, this to be. So again, I'm not sure from your drawing what the detail is of what the thickness of, of these should be. So let's just say it was 150. Now, double check that yourselves and, and put on what you need it to be. You know, if it's bigger than that, if it's smaller than that, just double check. Um, I'm just showing for the purpose of demonstration. So again, you can choose which side you want it to go to. So I think we'll go to this side. I'm going to choose that line then I'm going to go to draw and draw lines I'm going to draw in where I need it so I need one from this point oh double check that your offsets off as well a zero before you go draw on that line draw that line across just past it and I'm going to need one up here going past it and I'm also going to need So then we go to the trim tool again and we need to trim okay double check that you're choosing the right lines this one there so there we go that made that corner there and we need that one there okay and then here we need that one to there and that one to be there other way Well, we've got another extrusion so okay that and you can see it there so then you should be able to go to modify and mirror if we just select it first and go to mirror choose your center line and it should flop on the other side which it did again when you do that check your view there they are there and you can see that they're all the same thickness. So again, you know, this dimension might be different for your models. Just I just use this for a demonstration to double check, you know, what should this topical section be for truss for a residential building and that. And you can edit that easy enough. So these two this one, these two, and one in the middle is what we've left. And it all follows the same process, so we go back to the front. I'm going to do this one next. So, go to create extrusion, and I'm going to pick lines, and I'm going to set an offset again. What did I have that up? 150, was it? Something random. And you can choose which side. I'm going to choose that side. And then I'm going to do draw lines, make sure that offset is on zero and I'm going to draw a line from here to here from there to there and one going across and one going there and then we have to trim so I want this line to trim to there I want this line to trim to there and I want this one to trim to there, and this one to trim to there. And 
finish that and we have another one so then you can mirror that again with that added and you can go to your 3d view you can see you have another tail on it so you could tidy that up again about there by just trimming that back um but you get the idea so that's them all done there same like this as well so that's good and continue on go back to the front view and i'm going to add extrusion here and here so go to create extrusion uh, again pack lines and offset this or whatever whatever thickness you want it to be or you need it to be and choose where you want it to go so i'm going to go this side or actually maybe this side because we've got the the height of the room there so that side and i'm going to draw lines then with no offset and do one across here because we're going to need to trim that back and then go one across here because we're going to need to trim to there and i'm going to do one down the center that and then you can trim these back again go to modify it trim so i don't want this line to trim to there i want this line to trim to there and i want this line to trim to there and this line to trim to there and then we've got that Add okay select that you can mirror it across the center line there's another one added go to 3d view again and you can check what you've got and that looks fine they're all the same thickness fine then you go back to your front view again and you do the same thing for this and this and one in the middle and that is the truss stop lovely so again go to create extrusion lines set and offset whatever it should be i'm just going to guess that right pick which side you want it to go on and do it there and then i'm going to draw lines no offset and we're going to use one up there here as well and across the bottom So then we use the trim again. That line to trim to here. Oh, other way about, sorry. That line to trim to there. That line to trim to there. That line to trim to here. Oh, other way. That line, that line to trim to there. And that line to trim to there. So then you can see there's another one added. Okay, that. You can select that. You can mirror it across that line and you've added another one. Go to your 3D view, see what it looks like. Fine. And the last thing we're missing is just the center one. So, front view again. And we'll go create extrusion, pick lines, and offset. Um, 75 this time because we're going to have one on each side and it should be the same thickness. Well, let me just check actually. I oh, know it should be 150 or whatever it should be. So sorry, sorry, just ignore that. That should be 150 there. And the same and choose one on this side. Fine. And then we're going to go draw lines. Again, put your offset to zero, and we're going to need to trim it up to there. We need to trim it down the center as well. We're going to need to trim it to here, and even and 
and then we trim. So we can trim. So I want. So I'd want this line to trim to here. I want. That line to trim to there. I need that line to trim to there. And I want. Oh, by the way. That line to trim to there. And I want that line to trim to there. So then we've added another one. Let's see what that looks like. Check 3D view. Sign and we just mirror that again. Select it, go to mirror, pick your axis, send point, and if we go to 3D view. You can see you have kind of trust made there. And if we check your elevation views, it's all going to be the same thickness. Which is good. So here we've got a trust roughly made, kind of resembles what we've got there. And once you've that done, save it again. And then once it's finished, you're ready to load it into your project. So to load it onto your project, um, once you're finished and you have your, your truss done out, now this is done very rough today, so you know you'll be a bit more exact as to what the size of each of these members should be. Um, but the general principle of how you do it is the same. Um, once you're finished drawing it out, then in the modify tab in your family editor, you can go to load into project. And then you can see your, your project open. It's just an example of one. Then if I wanted to place it, I would go to my ground floor level or one of my floor plans, so maybe first floor plan. Um, so I know where to place it, but I'll just do it here now. Uh, you go to structure and beam. And if you've loaded it in, your truss should come up as a beam that you can add in and if you have it on you can see it's not facing the right way so if you use the space bar you can flip the direction and if I wanted to place it I would just select roughly where I wanted it to go and that's where I would add it so if I just put it out here so you can see what it looks like in the model at the minute this is a perfect example shows up so let me just hide these so you can see now the truss that I made is now in the model and you would of course just have that placed the whole way spanning along there at the right level so again you can change here the level that you want it to be at. So if I wanted it to be at the second floor level, which I do, you can see I changed that in the constraints level, change it to the right floor I wanted it to be at, and I would just copy those across. So you can see there, there's the truss, and you can see in this example, where someone's already done their roof, that those lines are indicating the trusses that they've done. So that's how you load it onto your project. So we delete that out of this example and show you their trusses that they've added. So you can see there that they've added all of their trusses, they've spaced them out and they've added the purlins going across as well. what this example's trusses look like. Hide that. 
there is this person's trusses. So you can see that their first floor is with um, their truss and their floors on top of the truss there. And you can see how they have added the purlins. So they're just beams that they've placed as they went structure beam and they've created a beam, a tumble beams going across. And they've done the same for how it joins up each section meets. Um, so how this section meets the main trusses and how the back section meets the main truss as well. So the aim is to get something like that. Now it's not 100% either, but if you get these trusses finished and loaded under your project, that is a good start. So I'm going to stop recording here and hopefully the video was clear and if you follow it step by step you'll be able to make your trusses and be able to load them under your project.